Governor Newsom said he is willing to talk to the counties to discuss how to reopen, even if they don't meet all the qualifications for progressing to the next stage. As we discussed during the last talk, reopening will make us more unsafe, but we're reopening for many reasons, not least of which is quality of life. Sure, there are the physical needs like food and shelter, but we require more in this country than Africa. Most of us couldn't live in Zambia. We just simply couldn't accept their standard of living. Stress kills here. Dr. Lorna Breen committed suicide after working in Epicenter, New York City, and being cooped up is stressing all of us out. So how is Governor Newsom going to work out a deal with the local communities? With a game of rock, paper, scissors, winner gets to decide? Hopefully not. Hopefully he will compromise. We actually compromise all the time. Look at this lady who's protesting. She's wearing a face covering, and so is the lady next to her. They want things to reopen, but they want to protect themselves as well. You see these refugees? I bet their end game plan wasn't to leave their country and stay in a refugee camp for months and possibly years, but they couldn't reach their goal of settling in Europe immediately, so they're waiting here. It's a compromise. Remember when cars had lap belts? We now know they're not safe. You can get seriously injured even in a minor accident. The band pushes into your abdomen, it damages your internal organs, but it was hard to put a shoulder belt in the middle seat. It was a compromise. And the people working at the meat packing factories? Do they do this for the enjoyment? They work there because they get paid for it. It's even more risky now, but guess what? They need money to buy food. They trade off the infectious risks with money. It's a compromise. Have you ever haggled? Do you consider it a lose-lose situation? You don't get the item for the price you wanted, the seller doesn't get the price he wanted as well, you meet somewhere in between, but guess what? It's a compromise. Why do they build such a road with zigs and zags and so many switchbacks? It isn't the most efficient. You have to walk so much more than if we were straight up, but most people can't scale cliffs. So they walk further, but they can make it up the mountain. Is that a good compromise? Do you know how hot it is in Vietnam? How humid it is? How can a woman bear to wear so much clothing? Well, they don't want their skin to get dark. Sure, it's hot, but they can't just change the weather, so they have to accept this compromise if they don't want their skin to become darker. And how would this work in practice? Well, reviewing the definition of compromise, we see that first of all, you have to understand the rationale because the world isn't perfect. The method you use is something called reasonableness. And the result is everybody wins some and loses some. How would this work in practice with the coronavirus? Well, some people may not wear masks. Some people may not socially distance, but they should promise they'll definitely notify authorities as soon as they become symptomatic. There's a famous case in Vietnam of a lady who brought the coronavirus to Hanoi. She was flying in business class and already had symptoms. She came back from London, but she didn't tell anybody she had symptoms. She kept bearing it out until days later she got really sick and went to the hospital and they found she had coronavirus and actually had transmitted it to 16 other people as well. Oh yeah, she'd been to Italy, but she has two passports so they didn't know that and she didn't bother to tell them. If people don't want to do things like wear masks or social distance, they should at least promise they'll notify people if they have symptoms. People may not want to wear a mask, but they have to respect the right of a store to refuse them service. I remember working at Burger King. No shirt, no shoes, no service. Not a big deal, right? Well, it was for us because we were across the beach. Restaurants can open up for dining, but just like how the health inspector will shut them down for a safety violation, they may be sued if someone gets sick. They should take responsibility for that. Compromise. We aren't striving for the best here. We're just striving for better than nothing. I think that's what it's going to take as we reopen because people don't change their behavior all of a sudden. Look, this is during the bombing of London in World War II. This man is very safe underground, safer than if you're at home above ground. Everybody around him has fallen asleep, but he just can't get to bed. Why? Human behavior is hard to change, so even a little bit of a change is a good thing, and to get there, we have to compromise.